Hi class, my name is Julia. I came to the U from Southern California specifically for the world-class skiing, but in my four years here I have become an avid rock climber, hiker, and trail runner. As I have delved deeper into the world of outdoor sports, my interest and passion for the environment has also intensified. So in this video, I will be exploring the positive connection between outdoor recreationists and environmental activism. Firstly, I will be taking you to Uray, Colorado, an ice climbing hub. I am visiting just weeks before the annual ice climbing festival. As you can see by the many banners hung by the city, the residents appear excited to be hosting this event. Uray is such a small town, with the biggest draw being outdoor recreation, so much of the city's revenue stems from ice climbers during these winter months. Of course, without reliable winters, the ice climbers would not visit this place and their business would go elsewhere likely raising the local sphere of climate change. Does owning a business that is reliant on cold winter months to bring in customers make you more interested in weather, climate, and environmental conditions? Yeah, uh, it does. We're, we're very interested in the weather uh, and climate change and whatnot around here uh, just because the weather is so variable. Um, like last year we had a horrible snow year. We didn't get any precipitation almost. And this year we have a ton. Does being a climber, especially an ice climber, make you more concerned with environmental issues? For sure, you know, like the entire sport is dependent on having a healthy winter and a consistent year after year healthy winter so that we can return to these places that we love to go to and grow our community not going to get stronger or larger. We're not going to have new climbers and people to help protect these places if winters are getting worse and worse every year for ice climbing, climbing in general. According to a survey conducted by researchers Dunlop and Heffernan from Washington State University, participation in outdoor recreation activities creates a heightened concern for environmental problems through direct exposure to the deterioration of wild spaces. Experiences like these foster a commitment for protection between the land and the person, healing the metabolic rift that divorces human culture from nature. Additionally, time spent outdoors often results in a preference for a natural aesthetic, strengthening one's opposition to environmental degradation. Now I am in Moab, Utah for an upcoming trail race. Moab is a mecca for all things outdoors. There is incredible climbing, mountain biking, and hiking all on public and federal land in the area. Here, I will also be focusing on the positive relationship between outdoor activities and environmentalism. Over this weekend, I ran the Arches Ultra Trail Race. As this was amid the government shutdown, and a part of the race course was in Arches, a national park that was understaffed during this period, runners were advised to pack out any trash they created while running. I was pleased to see all runners abide by this rule. Additionally, southern Utah is home to much cryptobiotic crust, a living organism that looks like soil, and thankfully every runner I saw carefully avoided stepping on this creature. As I mentioned previously, Moab is a perfect place for hiking, climbing, and biking, but it is also a popular site for ATVing and four-wheeling, activities that also take place outdoors but contribute more to the degradation of wilderness than to its conservation. Edgar L. Jackson, a researcher, used much of the same data as Dunlap and Heffernan to delve even deeper into the connection between recreation and conservation. He concluded that participants of appreciative activities, like hiking, biking, and skiing, were more likely to hold broad pro-environmental attitudes, while those who recreated through mechanized activities, like dirt biking, ATVing, and four-wheeling, were only concerned with issues in the narrow scope of their preferred sport. This is Momentum, a popular rock climbing gym in Salt Lake. The bulletin board seen here is evidence of climbers' passion for the conservation of the land. In what ways does being a climber make you more invested in environmental issues such as climate change and access to public land? I think it just has to do with like the community that we kind of started as a climbing community, I think in general, we're pretty invested in protecting our climbing areas. But we also realize that those climbing areas are inside parks and public lands that we want everyone to have access to, but you know, still be protected in a way that you know they're there for generations and not just you know a few years. 
Um, it's really hard to see like areas destroyed. Um, but as climbers and in general, just like outdoor activists, I think we have to have a responsibility to be um, stewards of the earth. Um, and it's really hard for some people. I'm not gonna say that everyone's perfect at doing this. Um, there are a lot of climbers who I found leave trash around and I'll pick it up or whatever when you go out. And, you know, you want to leave it the same way you walked in without anything on the ground. Um, overall, I'd say the climbers are fairly good stewards and fairly good people with like going outside and um, trying to do their best to clean up areas, whether it be just cleaning up trash or protect areas, build trails. Um, and then as far as climate change, you know, try to do our best to limit our impacts. Um, and then I'm sure there are lots of climbers that are invested within other, you know, realms of it, whether it be through nonprofits or, um, you know, maybe they research or something. So overall, climbers I think have responsibility, but just outdoor activists in general, the climbers kind of fit under that group. As I mentioned, I purposefully came to Utah to be close to the greatest snow on earth, and I have been calling the slopes at Alta home for three years now. Unfortunately, in spring 2018, the management team of Alta announced plans to expand their property against advice from Save Our Canyons and other conservation groups. The slogan, Keep Baldy Bald, has emerged as the team prepares to add a tram that will carry skiers to the top of Mount Baldy, now only accessible via hiking. Alta is known for its old school charm, and an addition like this will surely change its fate forever. So I decided to try out other ski resorts this year and give my money to resorts who are, so far, respecting the environment while maintaining their slopes. How has being a skier influenced your opinion on climate change? Well, I'm from Southern California, so I'm lucky enough to not really see many of the effects of climate change, but coming out here to Park City and being a skier, I definitely have noticed the effects of climate change and like the health of the weather a lot more. Um, and so since I notice it more and that I'm of age to be voting, I definitely feel that being a skier and knowing about it, I look into more the people that I'm voting for and the policies that I'm voting for to make sure that they're like with my beliefs and protecting the environment. As the author Porter Fox is quoted on Ascent Backcountry's website, skiers did not create climate change, but we are among a few populations who will be hit by it hardest. It's time to stand up and save our snow. Forget about fear. Get serious about advocacy and put candidates into office who will do the right thing and lead us into a cold, snowy future. To end on a positive note, I'd like to share a recent cause for celebration in regard to our Earth. In February, the Natural Resources Management Act was passed by Congress, and as Eric Murdoch, the Director of Policy for the Access Fund said, the win is an important victory for everyone who loves getting outside on public lands. This legislation will help fund parks and recreation across the country, create new protections for climbing, mountain biking, and other recreation. Truthfully, I think this is a win for all, though, as it increases the accessibility of wild spaces and will hopefully provide future generations with the chance to experience nature.